All of our neighbors had already mowed their lawns twice. I kept insisting that our grass was not in need of such a precaution, or I was able to check the weather forecast and cite that there was rain coming and therefore dangerous to be out in the storm. For you see, in my house, it was my job to be the caretaker of the green. I hated it. I avoided it. I even pretended I was sick to escape the arduous chore of pushing our power mower around the yard to guarantee my one dollar a week allowance. Part of it was teenage rebellion. There is certainly a misunderstanding about that condition. Teenage rebellion is not a choice like whether to wear a hat to the beach. It's more like an emotional diarrhea which attacks you when you least expect it, causing you to run out of the room screaming. And in addition, I was a fat boy, and the idea of walking around back and forth to simply receive the payoff which pleases your family for only about eight days was not enough to motivate me to fire up the old growler to give the yard a haircut. I even listened to people's suggestions on how to cut the lawn and make it enjoyable. I was never able to recapture their ecstasy. But worst thing of all, my dad expected me to use the hand trimmers after I finished mowing and caretake the areas that were not able to be reached by the blades. I refused. Matter of fact, I can't remember doing it more than two or three times because it demanded two actions that every fat boy dreads. Bend over or kneel down. My body type was more suited for standing, sitting, or reclining. After a while, my dad was content when I actually did mow the lawn before a machete was needed, so much so that he completely dropped the trimming issue. He got tired of hearing me claim that the blades were too rusty to cut through the overgrowth. Because my dad did not force me, it was a good ten years before I learned the importance of straining my will to do a little bit more than my whim dictated. So when I raised sons, I learned that there are three purposes for discipline. Number one, to get your kid to confront his or her weakness. Number two, in the process to address their fear. And three, maybe most important of all, they are trapped into doing something they don't really just don't want to do. If you consider this discipline to be cruel or unusual, you will probably give your children a pardon, which will later haunt them as they continue the crime of laziness.